Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux and welcome to the start of essentially a new chapter in this series. In the last few episodes we sent our first Kerbals into Planetary and we basically gained a load of science. For the next few episodes what we're going to be doing is start thinking about base building and actually putting up some infrastructure to be able to use some of the parts that I unlocked at the end of the last episode. Some of the far future technology parts. So in order to do that, what I have just designed on screen is the Runty Rover. Yes, this is the small boy, the very tiny little teeny rover that I wanted to use. I, I basically wanted to design a rover that I could fit into the cargo bay of a Manta. Because what I'm going to do with this rover, we are going to go over to Armstrong. We're going to go over to Armstrong because I want to scout out that moon. I don't need to do this, but I felt this was the natural progression of things. I want to scout it out for a suitable site for a surface base. I've scanned Armstrong and I know exactly where I'm going to be landing already before doing this, but I felt there's some sort of realism maybe. Maybe we should send a crew down just to check out the local area and make sure there aren't any sort of wild beasts hanging around on the surface of that vacuum moon. Yeah, no, I, I'm not sure if anything would really be surviving out there, but you never know. So what we are going to do, and what we have done, is made that tiny little small runty rover, and we are going to fit that into this new Manta design. The Manta itself isn't a new design, it's, well, it's, it's got two drop tanks on the wings, that's the only thing that has changed. However, we are no longer launching two of these at once. When I used to launch these, I had this weird contraption where we'd strap two onto the side. I've gone for a much more shuttle-like way of launching these now, or more like the Buran, where the fuel tank, the external fuel tank, does actually have some engines on it. And what we're going to do is we are going to use that external fuel tank, we'll ditch that, and then we will use the Manta to get the rest of the way up to orbit. Now, I've kind of gone against what I like to do in this series a little bit here, because that first stage is not going to, re not going to be recoverable yet. No, that is something that we will be working on later on in this episode, because I do want to be able to reuse as many of the parts as I possibly can. And by the end of this episode, I want to have a vehicle that can get us over to Armstrong and be completely reusable. We don't expend any of our stages to get over there. Full reusability would be really nice. Anyway, we did make it to orbit with the new Manta design. It's a little bit janky, that fuel tank, and it's a little bit weird flying, but Mech Jebber's send guidance was more than capable of getting us to orbit. So, we plotted out our manoeuvre to go over to Armstrong, and I am struggling to actually find my encounter here, which was a little bit weird. When I time warped ahead just a tad, it did actually appear, but that, that was rather strange. So obviously at the moment, we've got the expendable fuel tank, which we're just ditching, we're not going to recover that. We've also got those expendable drop tanks on the wings. I am going to change that later on in this episode. We are going to make this design fully reusable, which will be very nice. But we are at Armstrong, and now what we are going to do is try and pick a suitable landing site for the Manta. Now, I, I just want to make it aware, the last time that I ever sent a space plane to Armstrong, was in the last Coming Home series, before I slapped Redux onto the title and started again. And it was in the episode That's Plain Dangerous, and it did not go very well at all. Upon return, I think that might have been one of the times we killed Zicky Kerman, but yes, the plane did not survive re-entry at road very well, and we ended up killing, I think, two Kerbals. Obviously, the Manta, this device, this plane, I've been using this an awful lot, and I know that it can fly incredibly well. So I was quite confident in my abilities to get this back down safely at road, as soon as we got back to road anyway, as long as it could make the return journey. We do have 3,200 meters per second delta V, so that should be more than sufficient. Anyway, we are now on the surface of Armstrong. We have decoupled the Runty Rover, the small boy. Basically, I named that rover. I wanted to put alliteration in the title, so I just went onto Google, and you know, as you do, typed in small, typed in small synonyms, and Runty Rover was the only one that came up with an R, so that's why it is the Runty Rover. Not, not because it's like 
the runt of the litter or anything like that. No, 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 it's, it's just alliteration, and alliteration is always nice to say. Anyway, we got Sticker Kerman out, and I can't actually remember who the other Kerbal was. I probably should have been checking that whilst seeing what they were doing rather than talking about the name of the rover, but you know, that would be what a smart person does, and apparently I am not that. Anyway, here is the thumbnail. <laughs> this was quite a cool shot, I thought, of the Manta in the background as the small rover makes its way around. So the purpose of this mission, as I have said, is just to explore the surface of Armstrong, see if there's any nice kind of flat ground where we can think about setting up a base that is going to produce uraninite, which we will then turn into enriched uranium. I also want to make liquid fuel and oxidizer on the surface of Armstrong. We're gonna do everything. And that is going to be the start of our infrastructure in making fission pellets for the first Far Future Technologies engine that I have unlocked, which is the Pulsed Fission Drive. And it is very nice. I did do a live stream. I did a couple of live streams, actually, a couple of months ago, where I designed the base module part, and I also designed an interplanetary vessel that we will be using that uses that engine. Although, since then, I have gone back and I've completely changed the interplanetary design, so that was a bit of a waste of a live stream, but you know, it's always fun to do live streams. So we kind of went not very far away from the Manta here, because I knew that I didn't really need to do an awful lot. This, this is more for show, for show for the people back at home to prove that the Space Center, the Space Agency, the Road Planetary Space Alliance, I, I think that's what we're called, is actually using their money to good ability. So we've scouted out the area. We, we know exactly where we're gonna go. And it actually turns out when I put the base down in a future episode, which I've already filmed, I've, I've recorded a lot of this stuff whilst I was ill. So yes, no, we're not gonna come anywhere near here. We're actually going to end up in the Highlands because the Highlands is where all the Uraninite and the ore is, that's, which is what we will be using in order to produce our liquid fuel and oxidizer. But with our scouting done, we are going to leave that small little runty rover on the surface and we are going to grab the Manta and try and return home. It's only about 130, no, 160 meters per second of Delta V required to get back into Armstrong orbit. Really not a lot. Java Kerman is the other Kerbal on board. There we go. That's who it is. I, I, I always feel a bit bad when I forget to name the Kerbals on missions, but... We, we can see it is indeed Sticker Kerman and Java Kerman. But in the blink of an eye, we are able to get back to road. And what we're going to do is we are going to lower ourselves into a nice circular orbit, which still leaves us about 1,000 meters per second of Delta V in this Manta, which is absolutely fantastic. I now know that this design is more than capable of going to Armstrong and back. Although, as I have said, it is not completely reusable yet, but we will be working on that. And once again, we are, of course, going to try and bring these mantas down safely at the Space Center. I think this might be the first Space Center landing that I have done in this series where we've actually come back from a separate body. So usually I land at the Space Center when I've only been around road, but no, we've gone all the way to Armstrong and we were still able to successfully land at the Space Center, which was really, really nice. I've really got the knack of landing these at the Space Center now. I know exactly what I'm doing, which is may come as a shock to some people, because usually when I do stuff, it's just whacking things all over the place and hoping that it turns out for the best. Anyway, we are going to be back in the vehicle assembly building now, and we are going to try and make this reusable. So what I've done is I've added another fuel tank onto the external tank, which we are going to forbid the fuel. That way, when I use Mech Ascent Guidance to launch this, we will not be draining fuel from there, and we can use that fuel once we decouple the external booster to perform a powered landing, which is nice. We've added some legs, we've added some air brakes, although, one weird thing about those air brakes is that I was getting not a number error come up on the deploy limit, which we will see something a bit bizarre about later on in this episode. But there we go, we have fully designed this, we've taken off those drop tanks and actually made another couple of tanks inbuilt into the wings to give us that little bit of extra delta V to try and get us to orbit. The engines on the Manta, they have changed as well, they are now running purely on liquid fuel. So that is something different. It means we can save a bit of mass, not taking any oxidizer with us. But this was a problem that happened. Yes, Ascent Guidance, I need to tweak my settings for that a little bit because we went on a far too shallow trajectory to get us into orbit. 
And yeah, we were burning horizontally at about 20 kilometers, which would have been a no bueno. Absolutely not, no. We, we couldn't have gotten into orbit with that trajectory. So what we did, rather than burning all of that external tank, well, we detached the Manta on top, and we are now going to fly this back to the space center, where hopefully we can safely recover Ziggy Kerman III and Monkey Kerman. Yes, I do seem to put Ziggy Kerman in all sorts of perilous situations. Testing out these new designs is, is never great, but I know that theoretically this design should be more than capable of getting us to orbit. I just need to make sure that the settings on Ascent Guidance are correct. So what we are going to do is come back and launch another one of these again. The same two Kerbals are on board. Obviously, that mishap did not did not worry them too much, did not put them off from flying this vehicle again. And with some slightly updated turn rates on MechJeb, I think I changed it from 0.5 degrees per second to 0.35 degrees per second, we are more than capable of getting this up to orbit with no mishaps. It does take a while because those liquid fuel engines are really kind of bad. But we also have five and a half thousand meters per second of delta v once we get to orbit which does mean that we are going to have more than enough to go to armstrong and return with this design which is exactly what we want this to do we have come up with a design that can is fully reusable and can go to armstrong and back it's glorious anyway as i was saying the not a number error on those air brakes is making them do some kind of weird dance and flip through the rocket which was bad because it meant that they weren't really catching any drag, but we were able to successfully bring that down. And now all we're going to do at the end of this episode is try and bring the Manta down successfully. And I mean, we've done this a million times before. We know that this is, it's, it's all going to be fine. There is absolutely nothing to worry about here. So that is going to be the end of this episode. I know it's a bit of a shorter one. I just really wanted to contain the Rover and the new reusable Manta design all in the space of a single episode. But here we are just coming for the landing. I hope you have enjoyed this. Until next time, I have been Kanasa and I will see you later.